Hey guys and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Pachala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way and this video we are going to talk about oral radiology. So without further ado, let's get started. My lovely students, today's topic is the intensifying screen. Now that we have already covered the X-ray film. Now you will understand it better that the X-ray film has got the emulsion layer. In the emulsion layer, we have got the photosensitive, light sensitive, silver halide crystals. These silver halide crystals are swimming in the gelatin matrix. Now what happens when there is a X-ray radiation? Now suppose if we want to take this arm, X-ray of this arm, right? So, inside we have got a film, right? So, beneath we have got a film. Now, what do we want? When these X-ray are falling onto the surface, now what happens? These X-ray go in any form, right? So, this is the photon or x-ray radiation which is coming. So, what do we want? We want the image on the x-ray. How do we get the image? There are many ways to get an image. First of all, we have studied that. It has got an emulsion layer. So, the emulsion layer is basically a photosensitive layer. There are crystal, uh, there are silver halide crystals which are swimming in the gelatin matrix. And they, this gelatin matrix is going to absorb the processing chemicals. So, the pros, the, all the processing chemicals it absorb and thereby a reaction happens and this is the image production, right? Another way is that the image production that this X-ray which is coming, if we convert it to the light rays, if we convert it to the light rays, when, the, when we convert this X-ray to the light rays then also we can use it like how we use it. Photo, uh, photofluorography or like how we use in radiography. So that also we can use. Or another way is directly once the x-ray falls, we see that in the computer screen. So this we call it the fluoroscopy. So these are some ways. So today's video, we are going to talk about intensifying screen. Where do we use this intensifying screen? While converting this X-ray radiation, the photon radiation into the light radiation. So how do we convert it? We have got a chemical, a substance. So when we pass this light from a substance, so what this substance does? This substance is going to convert this X-ray radiation into the light radiation. So this is how, what is the substance called? This substance is called phosphor. So this phosphor is going to convert the X-ray radiation into the light radiation and this procedure we call it the luminescence. You must have heard of luminescence procedure. So luminescence procedure also is categorized into two parts. One is the fluorescence, one is the phosphorescence. So fluorescence is when this conversion is very fast. When this conversion is immediately, this is the when we use it for the radiographic purpose. The another one is the phosphorescence, which is a little bit slower. Now there is a, a time limit somewhere around 10 raised to power minus something uh, must be 8 or something like that. So if it is less than that, then it is a then it is a fluorescence. If it is more than that, then it is the phosphorescence. But the lag time is very less. So how it is helpful to us? It is helpful in such a way that the photon which is coming, it is converting to the light radiation. The conversion rate is so nice that it is going to reduce the X-ray exposure rate. The conversion rate is in thousands, hundreds. So somewhere around, around 100 to 1000 times the phosphor converts the X-ray photon into the light radiation. So we need less amount of X-ray exposure. That means if we want to convert a, a radiation into image, then me, that, that means we don't require lot of radiation exposure. That means we can reduce the radiation exposure up to 50 times if we use the phosphor and convert it to light. So how do we do it? So we are 
doing it let's discuss the procedure so there are some layers first of all first layer is our base layer so we have got a base layer this is the base layer right so i'm writing base above that we have got a protective layer this protective layer actually plays some important role i'm going to tell you right now so this base layer is basically at the base so what is the function of the base it's it provides the mechanical support to the film so this layer is somewhere around 0.25 mm right and it is made up of some plastic polyester plastic above that we have got a protective layer i'm going to tell you why it is called the protective layer it is not going to protect the base it is not going to protect the base let's see what is what it's going to do so above that we have got the phosphor layer you remember the phosphor pistons we just now talked about that they have got the property of luminescence so they are going to convert the x ray radiation into the light radiation so these phosphor crystals okay they are floating they are swimming into a matrix which is made up of plastic so p for plastic p for phosphor very easy to remember so these are the phosphor crystals which are floating inside the plastic above that we have got a protective layer again now this this coat is we call it the protective coat so this one is not the protective i am so sorry this is called the reflecting layer above that we have got a protective layer so what happens when there is a x ray when this x ray falls this x ray falls this is a photon now and we are going to convert it into light this phosphor crystals it is going to convert it into light radiation right and i told you remember i told you that it is going to convert into 100 to 1000 times so this x ray photon will be converted into light 100 to 1000 but some of the light information will go directly beneath so this is why we have kept this reflecting layer because this reflecting layer is going to reflect all the light now the light which we are getting we are going to absorb it we are going to use it for the production of image so this is our x ray film which is going to absorb all of this light and is going to convert into image and this light is this light which is coming from the x ray photon we are converting into light radiation this visible light we are using for the image production so why i have made it from the blue light because the first material the first phosphor material which we used was the calcium tungstate so this material calcium tungstate so this material was the first used material and it is the most commonly used material actually it produces blue spectrum of light in the visible light we have got a spectrum of colors right vibgyor we have all studied so the blue light is this um calcium tungsten uh, crystals calcium tungsten will going to produce the blue light now that we know the reflective layer the reflecting layer is made up of titanium dioxide right the base layer is made up of plastic the phosphorus layer is made up of phosphorus crystals which are embedded or suspended in the plastic and on the top of that also we have plastic can you see everywhere it is plastic 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 that means this film or this intensifying screen is flexible it is not hard so but just the reflecting layer which is very thin layer of metal so this is the uh, titanium oxide now titanium dioxide this is a very thin layer okay so as we increase the crystal size now before that let me tell you that what is the purpose of this reflecting layer reflecting layer is going to direct all the uh, light which is coming all the light which is coming it is going to reflect it it is reflecting it back so it is going to increase the sensitivity of the film but 
but it is again not that useful it will reduce the sharpness of the image so the clarity of the image you know what uh, how we take a picture from a really nice camera and we zoom it and it is like really awesome clarity that clarity is gone in this so there is the sharpness of the image because of this reflecting layer how it reduce ask me how it reduce i'm going to tell you that what happens when this light it should have fallen on the film on the exactly same area but when it is scattering like if you are suppose if you are clicking a picture okay you you have gone on a trek and you want to take the picture of the mountain and this is a really uh, nice trek and once you zoom it and take a uh, take a picture then what happens the clarity is gone so this is how the radiation are scattered my students so once the radiation is scattered now the image should have produced in that specific it should have strike in that specific area then the quality would have been nicer but now the image is scattered that means the sharpness of the image is gone and this is the reason that we do not use this intensifying screen in the iopr this is the reason that we use it for our extra oral radiographs for our opgs for the cephalo uh, for the uh, cephalograms and uh, we use it for all the extra oral x rays for the cephalometric skull radiographs so all these extra oral radiograph we use this intensifying screen but here we have a catch now this tung tungsten calcium tungstate it is scattering the light we have something uh, something recent in this we have got the rare earth intensifying screen in that we are using this rare earth metals which is the gd2o2stb right gdo2 this you have to remember it gd2o2stb so this is a terbium activated gadolinium oxysulfate this is one rare earth metal another one one more we have got is laobr tm so this is thulium activated lanthanum oxybromide now this is going to produce the green light so it again it depends on the light but the efficiency of these rare earth intensifying screen is four times more effective as compared to the conventional intensifying screen wherein we were using the calcium tungstate so this is even though some recently some of the iopr also are using the rare earth intensifying screens which consist of the terbium activated gadolinium oxysulfate and the thulium activated lanthanum lanthanum oxybromide so now that you know everything about the intensifying screen now that we use it for the purpose of extra oral radiograph panoramic radiograph we call it opg cephalometric skull radiograph why don't we use an iopr because there is a loss of resolution with their use we know this but it is very important that we are going to clean this uh, intensifying screen because if any debris if any spot if any scratch is there it is going to make the light spots on the image so whatever the image we are getting if this screen is dirty the image will also there will spots come on the image so what do we do how are we going to protect it i know that you will be telling that protective layer is there but it is not going to protect from the dust not going to protect from the debris and all scratch and all so we are going to keep it in a cassette you remember the radio cassette uh, the radio player if you have seen the old days we had a cassette so there was a box and there was a cassette so like that we have got a cassette for the intensifying screen so but you remember in the that radio cassette there was in one box there was only one cassette but here in the intensifying screen in one box we have got two intensifying screen in one cassette we have got either side two intensifying screen so that the exposure can be there on the each side of the cassette so guys this is about intensifying screen intensifying screen is made up of a base layer we have got a base layer which is providing the mechanical support to the film upper we have got a reflecting layer reflecting layer is going to reflect the light 
which is made up of titanium dioxide above that we have got a phosphor layer this is the most important layer we have got the phosphor crystals and as we increase the crystal size the speed of the screen is going to is, uh, the speed of the speed is going to increase and there is but the disadvantage is that the image clarity will go right so initially we used to use the tungsten calcium tungstate nowadays we have got the rare earth intensifying screens which consist of the uh, terbium activated gadolinium oxysulfate and the thulium activated lanthanum oxybromide so above that we have got a protective layer so that is going to uh, provide the protection for the phosphorus that is somewhere around 8 micron now you will get all these if you want to learn but i don't think it is very difficult to learn all these um, dimensions that is why i am not telling you so what is the use is that it is going to reduce the exposure reduce the exposure it is going to convert the x ray photons into light radiation into light rays so guys this is about intensifying screen uh, i hope that you have understood it well so if you have enjoyed the video then give it a thumbs up also you can comment in the comment section below and there is a link in the description box below to support me on paytm as well as on paypal to make free videos for you guys and to make free notes which will be available soon so till then keep reading keep learning stay motivated i'll see you soon in the next video